بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته The state of inner unawakenedness is so compelling that it does not leave us unless and until we make an active attempt to reflect within and to rid ourselves of this unawakened state. We discussed how the inner being imposes its values on the outer world. And then the outer world reflects it back to us and then we interact with it adversely for the most part. Now we turn to religion and to God in order to remedy that. But the most sorrowful thing is that even the religion that has come to liberate us becomes a product of our creation. And as opposed to liberating us, it further reinforces that state of bondage and state of slavery. How is that? Look at the way we are in our religions. We turn to religion not to liberate ourselves and to find our true calling, but for the religion to justify to us our inner biases and discriminations. So whereas a person who is in an enlightened state who would want to flow and grow and become as beautiful as God, we have made God like ourselves. He is somebody who will favor a particular kind. We have made God as intolerant as we are. We have issues with anger and rage, arrogance, inability to accept another. We have all these biases and discriminations within us. We use religion to justify them. That because the other is not as good as me, God will throw them in hell and will not look at them mercifully. And look at the state of crisis. I often say to my believing, faithful, brothers and sisters, that if we are the chosen ones, according to us, then how come those who are not of the same persuasion are the people who find cures to cancers? We pray to God to give us cure. God sends who we assume as an enemy of God with the cure. Are they not the favored ones as opposed to us? The response comes, no, God has made them to serve us. So our special status stems from what? From the very fact that we are, we, we have subverted religion. And then look at our interaction with God. We make pacts with God. If you do this, then I shall do this. We have reduced God and made him someone like us. He works for gains. When we curse others, we know it is something internally that does not sit right. So what do we do? We take aid of religion to justify the cursing of others. So even the most sacred of God's communication with this religion in that state of unawakenedness, we have polluted it. We have projected upon religion our own insecurities, our own likes and dislikes. And then we have used religion to justify to us what we are, as opposed to allowing religion to liberate us. Religion further enforces our state of enslavery and enslavement from within. Now, the same is the case for people who are not believers, and we are all equally suffering in this way. We are beholden to appreciation of people, their approval and their disapproval. But the fact is that we value their approval, and hence we are led by their approval. If we stopped valuing their approval, there would be no sense of yearning people's approval or validation. 
one of the greatest calamities upon us is that we are not truly awakened or free from within. We need constant validation. The same is with our relationship with God. God validates us. In that way, we are not worshipping the real God. If only we could understand God, the creator of the hundreds of trillions of stars, if not galaxies, cannot be concerned with a petty me doing good or doing bad. He is well beyond it all. So the world is a place for us to experience if only we can arrive into a real sense of existence. However, the world has become a place of captivity. And that captivity is not imposed by the world, but it is an inner captivity. We dare not look into ourselves and open ourselves up. It is the most uncomfortable part of life. Even when we observe our images, we are not really seeing what is there. We are seeing what we are projecting upon it. So the world is a place of bondage. Religion is a place of enslavery. God is someone that enforces that negativity upon us, if we can awaken to that and throw off the shackles, then maybe we can come into a real sense of substantive existence and ask a fundamental question. Am I really comfortable with the way in which I am? Does this world truly mean anything in itself? Does this religion truly do anything for me? Does it really make sense the way I am going about life and the way I have understood religion that pray to God and He will give me paradise? I can create that paradise here. The paradise that I yearn over there, what difference would it do? Isn't there something more to it than all of these things that I am operating within? These are the fundamental questions that need to be asked. And we need to understand that we are creating them. They are not things that are given to us. We need to understand that I have never actually read the scripture as the scripture. I have always placed my own view on the scripture. If I am truly a free soul, reading the Quran should not bar me from reading the Torah or the Injil from reading Hindu mythology or Greek mythology. Why should the Quran be so insecure? If I am a truly awoken person, I would not worship a God who is so insecure, who says to me, don't look at other religion. I cannot worship a God who will discriminate on the basis of faith when the other person tries to do his best to find the real truth. I will not value people on the basis of ethnicities. If I am awakened from within, I will know for a fact, to the best of my knowledge, I did not choose my ethnicity or my religion or my parent or my social statuses. I was born in a lap within a cradle of culture, and that's what's made me me. There is no real distinction in terms of ethnicity, in terms of religion, in terms of gender. So these biases can slowly start disappearing and we can start arriving into the real awakened state and we can start living a substantive and a proper existence, understand why we are here and make the most of it. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.
Let us reflect if the unbearable circumstances of this earth are our own doing and imposed by our own inner attitudes. And if we are able to change them and make this life a more beneficial experience.